friends and enemies welcome back to happy for now it's me isabel here I'm gonna go over my december reading so far i've already read a lot um i don't i mean i know how i got here but i also don't know how i got here it's very weird i've read a lot of manga and two comic bind ups um trades <laughs> So yeah, a lot of it has been that. So we'll talk about all the books um, in the order I read them and then we'll talk about the comics and manga. Just in case you're not interested in something, you can skip right through. I'll do timestamps down below. And yeah, I'm, I'm having a pretty good reading month in December. I thought I might actually like cut off my reading at some point this month to just start pre-filming for end of year content. But right now, it doesn't really look that way, but we shall see. The first book I read this month was All the Fields by Olivia Dade. Six star favorite. I loved Alex and Lauren. If you didn't like spoiler alert, you probably won't like this one, but it continues with our fan fiction theme again. Um, I love our heroine, Lauren, who is like not attractive. And we are reminded of the fact that she is in no way conventionally attractive and has a bird like <laughs> features <laughs> repeatedly by our hero, Alex, over here. And I just. It was so good. Alex is also begging to be pegged, literally, <laughs> in this book. And I have the bonus story from pre-ordering it and I still need to read it. But this was such a good audiobook. I loved it. I loved my time with it immensely. I honestly am so glad I read it. It is on my favorites of the year list. Just big harpy energy all around for everyone. I think that it was just so nice to read something with a heroine who wasn't like beautiful and she's apple shaped which is interesting to you. I don't feel like I've read a lot of apple shaped heroines and you know, she was confident in who she was and it didn't bother her that people didn't find her attractive. She just kind of lived her life and absolutely delightful. And in Alex, I saw myself a lot represented with his ADHD diagnosis and talking through having ADHD and sometimes your whims <laughs> and how that can go. It was very comforting to read that in a character and see myself reflected back. Uh, often we don't get a lot of ADHD rep in books. Uh, we're just now getting autism rep, so I'm not surprised that other forms of neurodivergence aren't in a lot of books, but this was fantastic. Next, I read Santa Claus is Going to Town on Me by ML Eliza. Uh, I gave this four stars as well. Well, as well. <laughs> I gave this four stars. This was really, really cute as well. Um, this one for me, just like, there's a lot of content notes to make on this <laughs> specifically around like um death of a parent when you're a child and feeling guilt around thinking you're the reason they died uh she hates christmas and you know santa comes around to like turn her day around a little and it's pretty great this is like kind of weird mix of a santa romance with an alien romance because there's some stuff but it was really really fun to read i had a blast with it Highly recommend. It is on KU. It is a perfect winter read, especially for the week of Christmas. Like, this is a good Santa banging book, so check it out. Then I have Wrapped Up in You by Talia Hibbert. This is the Kobo original exclusive. I still need to read the Chloe Lease one that came out. I think that's how you say your last name. But this one came out last year, and I really, really liked this. I would say this was like a British Chris Evans hero. This is a childhood friends to lovers. He is a big celebrity in LA and he comes back home to the UK. They go to Scotland every year and is trying to prove to his best friend's twin sister that he's in love with her and why they should be together. And it just was really precious. It is fade to black, um, but it still had enough like on page development that I was fine with that. Like it worked still. Fade to black isn't always a bad thing, obviously, but for me, I prefer to see that connection on page, but I still really enjoyed this. Then I read... In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, which I gave three and a half out of five stars. This is one that I feel like I was prepped for because a lot of people did not like it last year and some people I know loved it. And I felt square in the middle at three and a half stars, I feel like. And it was not bad by any means. Um, I think I knew what to expect. It is Groundhog's Day. And I knew that I was going to be confused at first because it's just hard to grasp who all these characters are. But I did enjoy the audiobook and I gave it a three and a half overall. I think it was really fun how the story played out. I did not love the third act breakup and I had a couple quibbles with like how the Groundhog's Day stuff worked. I think there were too many characters at the end of the day and I think they needed to like trim out some of that part of the story. Then I reread Paddled by Krampus by Harley LaRue which I also gave three and a half stars. I think I gave it three stars my first read. I had a Krampus vlog last year 
I wasn't moving so like no themed vlogs this year but that Krampus vlog I'll link to you y'all down below if you want where I read a bunch of books about Krampus um I gave it three stars I think or three and a half three stars somewhere in there it, it's it's an erotic romance situation with Krampus not even it's just erotica basically with Krampus and it's fine I just don't think it holds up against Harley LaRue's other work and I've only read The Dare by her and like The Dare is way better so take with that what you will then I read Dipped in Holly by Dana Isley and this book so TikTok hyped it I'm not gonna lie like TikTok has been hyping the shit out of this book this is an older man younger woman she uh gets dumped at a bar and he's the bar owner and like she's like crying in the bathroom when she leaves she runs into him and he like sets her down at the bar and gives her a drink and like calms her down and like he kisses her and it, it's and he's like says things like you know like this way his last memory of you is you is you being kissed by me and like watching you fall for someone else chef's kiss he is a daddy like for sure this book is daddy kink light i would call it like she calls him daddy that's that's really the daddy kink in it but we do also have the christmas hallmark this year which is being tied up by christmas lights i feel like i've seen this in multiple books mentioned that they get tied up by, with christmas lights who knew i didn't know that was gonna be a thing but it's a big thing now so here we are <laughs> um yeah absolutely loved this read it so fast like i fell asleep reading it and finish it the first thing next morning so highly recommend then i read finley donovan is killing it by i don't know this author's name and i just finished this book oh shit this is by ellie casamino casamino uh, this is an absurdist mystery is what I'm calling it. So like Dial A for Aunties, if you didn't like that, you're not going to like this. This follows Finley, who is a romantic suspense writer, and she is struggling to write her next book. She's recently di divorced. Her husband's dating this like woman who's kind of awful. She's got two kids and like she's drowning in bills and all these things, and she gets hired as a hitman on accident. Uh, and she kind of follows through with it kind of there's a I don't want to give away too much but this is one of those books where like you go for a ride and you just have to be ready for the ride just like dial a for aunties same thing like you just have to be ready for that ride and it's a good time I had fun I giggled multiple times about it and I'm excited to read the sequel in February so we'll see how that unfolds but yeah it was a fun time uh then all right now let's talk about comics and manga so the comics I read this month were Sagas Volume 5 and 6, which I gave four, four and a half stars. Saga continues to be great. I really like Saga, but again, I know, I feel like I don't need to talk about it extensively because I think everyone's heard of Saga, but if somehow you haven't, it's a space epic comic that is coming back in January. So I'm doing a read along with a bunch of amazing booktubers. And we are rereading the bind-ups of all the volumes until the new volume comes out, 55 or something, on January 26th. So we're up to volume 7 and 8 and 9 next. So yeah, it's going to be a good time. I'm excited. I'm really enjoying this reread. I love this series. I think it doesn't hold up the same as it did when I read it years ago, but I'm still really happy I'm revisiting it in preparation for the, the hiatus to end. All right, we have manga. We have a lot of manga. So first things first, we have Oharu Rides volumes 12 and 13. So I did finish the series this month. I gave both of them four stars. I think it took way too long for this issue to be resolved. I think it was just a little too drawn out for me. So four stars overall to the series. I still enjoyed it. I think it's a fun shoujo. You know, it's just cute. It's fun. It was a little dramatic for me and over the top at times but I do kind of expect that in sho shoujos, so take that with what you will. Then I read Sweat and Soap Volume 10, my sweet babies. Uh, I'm still debating if I'm buying Digitally 11 or not because I kind of want to read the last one, but I gave this five stars and no surprise. This is an all-time favorite manga for me. This is the manga that has made me fall back in love with reading manga, to be honest with you. Uh, it's giving me all the things I didn't know I wanted from mangas, uh, volume 10 is a great continuation of the story. We watch them get engaged and get married uh, privately and like go through some of those emotions and it's just precious. Um, I don't feel like this is a spoiler because volume 11 is literally her in a wedding dress so 
just FYI. And it's all in their relationship. The conclusion makes sense to be them together. But yeah, this was just absolutely delightful. I love this cover. Such a good volume. Next, we have Rose and Blood Volume 1. This is a new one from Sh Shoujo Beat. This follows a group of vampires that eat crystallized blood situation and a girl who gets trapped at the residence and ends up becoming a worker for them and it's following her adventure with them. Volume 1 doesn't give us a lot of plot yet. We just kind of met the characters and not a lot is happening. Give it four stars though because I'm super excited for Volume 2. I'm excited to continue this. I think it will be a good time. I think it will be a fun one. I don't... I really think we'll have a good time with it overall if that makes sense. So I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to see how it all plays out. Uh, and I'm curious enough to be like, yeah, I'm definitely picking up the next couple volumes to make a decision on the series. But yeah, she kind of starts to figure out what's going on, but not completely in volume one. Then we have My Androgynous Boyfriend, volume three. This is about a couple who's been together since high school and her boyfriend is androgynous and a model. And like everybody fawns over him. He's the blonde one here. And this is another boy he's modeling with. And this just continues to follow their very cute relationship. It's much tamer than Sweat and Soap, but it gives me similar feelings to Sweat and Soap. It does not come out very often, so every time a new volume drops, I'm always so excited. And I just absolutely adore this series. I think Volume 3 was another great addition. I would have liked more focus on their relationship, maybe. But overall, I'm still really happy with it. And I gave it four stars as well. I can't wait to continue reading. Then I read Volume 3 of Yakuza Lover. This is one of those mangas that I feel like if you are a romance reader and like you haven't picked up Sweat and Soap, but you like instant love and like filth in a good way, like, you know what I'm saying when I say filth? I don't mean that in like a, you're dirty for liking a lot of sex and like all that. Volume 3 for us though really gives us the connection between the two characters in the series. The first two volumes are definitely more insta lovey and you don't see their like emotional connection as much, whereas volume three we start to develop that, but it follows a girl, um, Yuri, who is rescued by Oya, the Yakuza boss, from a party, and it follows their like adventure from there. It's again, very, very smutty, very good, and I really, really like it. So I definitely enjoyed this volume. I gave it four stars as well. I think the people who don't like a lot of sex on the page are not gonna like this series, and if you demand a lot of plot, you're not gonna like this series. But if you're like me <laughs> and we have similar tastes, you will probably love it. Then we have my favorite, my babies, Yona of the Dawn, volume 32 and 33 I read. I'm officially caught up again. I'm a little nervous because I know we're gonna hit the point where we're caught up with Japan. I was talking to Shay about that and I was like, I don't wanna, but we will persevere and we will get through this <laughs> uh, together. This continues to follow Yona's journey with the four dragons and Hawk, her bodyguard. Um, there is like light romance in this fantasy intrigue around politics and stuff. I felt like volume 33, we really saw Yona making some moves and changes to get things she wanted. And in volume 32, we had some big revelations about Suwon and that was really, really great. I can't tell you too much because obviously we're 33 volumes in. I would spoil it. So, I'm just gonna say if you haven't tried Yona of the Dawn and you like fantasy romance, try Yona of the Dawn. Next we have another fantasy romance, which is Nina the Starry Bride, volume five. This is a digital only release, so I've been reading this on my iPad occasionally as they come out. Um, I usually let like one or two build up and then I read it, but I noticed I had five, so I went for it. And volume five was great, another four star read. Um, it was such a great addition to the story. I'm really curious to see where we're going. I'm really excited for volume six. Definitely will be picking up volume six pretty quickly after it comes out to read, because I need to know how this unfolds. We started to see some jealousy between the two main male characters in this that I'm very curious to see, like, how is that going to play out exactly? So, cannot wait. This is another, again, fantasy romance. This has the where you're pretending to be someone you're not trope happening, which I absolutely love. Uh, yeah, so I absolutely love that trope. So this was just right on par for my preferred interests on these books. Um, then I'm going to speed through the last two. Hopefully this doesn't die. Then I read Young Girls Don't Play Fighting Games, volume one. 
This is about two girls at a private school where they're not allowed to play video games and they both love this fighting game and the one discovers her and they start playing together and there's like kind of a like romance theme happening. So we'll see, but I loved the video game rep in this and how that was, uh, I loved how the video games are done in this. Personally, I thought it was really, really fun and I just can't wait to read volume two, which just came out. Next, we have Scarlet Volumes 1 and 2. This is a Yuri horror manga. This does have sex on the page. Um, it is paranormal and it was really good. I really, really liked Volume 1 and I thought Volume 2 was a little lackluster. So I gave the whole series like a three and a half. Uh, if you're looking for a quick read though, I think it's worth a pickup if you can find it cheap. I don't think I would pay full price for these. They're $12.99. I don't think I would pay that for them. I'm glad I read it, but it's definitely one that I could see myself not holding on to in the future, depending on how big my collection gets. And then the last manga I read was Blood on the Tracks, volume seven, which I also gave five stars to. This continues to be one of my favorite thriller suspense situation mangas. I don't even know what to call it. We follow a mom and a son, and the mom is like off her rocker. Uh, it's wild, some of the things she does, um, and we are following her manipulating her son and it kind of, it's abuse, abusing him and what that does to him like mentally. Um, and I cannot wait to see where we go in volume eight because some of the reveals in the end of seven, oh boy, holy crap. All right, I sped through that before my camera battery died, so thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, let me know your favorite read so far in December or if you have a Santa book you think I should read like in the next week. If you don't want to do that leave me a pig emoji and i will see y'all in my next video in just a few days <laughs> you can find links to all these books in that description box as well as links to be my friend anywhere on the internet down below and i will talk to y'all soon bye already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know Life with no distractions, we'll get